is concert tour related to the recent sex allegations against Jackson, but it shows him at a critical point in the saga we've been following for weeks. But the girl is mine. Doo -doo. In the videotape deposition, Michael Jackson seems a bit out of it. He admits he's when taking painkillers after undergoing oral surgery, and he was slow in just spelling his name. Mr. Jackson, would you spell your last name? J-A-C-K-S this tape testimony was taken in Mexico in early November, right before Jackson abruptly called off his world tour to seek treatment for an addiction to painkillers. On the tape, Jackson remembers almost nothing about two songwriters who say the singer stole their tunes. When did you first meet him? I don't remember. How long have you known him? I don't remember. Did you first meet him in Los Angeles? No. Meanwhile, Jackson remains in seclusion by some accounts at his Santa Barbara ranch while a civil suit on molestation charges is proceeding. Can you tell us how the deposition went this morning? How are you feeling? Today, Jackson's current maid was deposed, but Gail Goforth would say nothing to the media. The attorney, meanwhile, for Jackson's accuser had only this to say, referring to Jackson's attorney, Johnny Cochran. I was smiling yesterday, and I was smiling uh, broader than Mr. Cochran. Tomorrow, attorneys in the civil molestation case are back in court. The judge will decide whether to make permanent a temporary gag order or issue just several days ago. Reporting live from Los Angeles, I'm Christine Devine. John, back to you. All right, thanks, Christine, for that report, Corian. And, John, the videotape may offer insight into what was going on inside Jackson's head. A current affair had experts study that tape to try to see if Jackson did have a drug problem like he claimed. Without going into too much detail, could you tell me how you uh, started as an entertainer? Well, singing around the house, dancing, making noises, you know, sounds, making my own rhythms, making my own music. Michael Jackson is trying to prove it is his own music. He goes, I love you more than he. It's November 8th, the day before the superstar boarded a plane in Mexico and ran for cover. Jackson canceled his worldwide tour claiming he was hooked on painkillers and needed help. Watch him closely. Does this look like he has a drug problem? The attorney who took the deposition does not think so. We were not informed of any addiction problem. Uh, we could not see any evidence of, a, of an addiction problem. The witness was alert. He didn't slur. He answered questions. What was the name of uh, the group that you uh, performed with when you first started? Jackson 5. Now, who was the Jackson 5? Marlon, Tito, Jackie, Jermaine, Randy. David Shea specializes in the treatment of drug abuse. He watched the tape and agrees Jackson does not look hooked. I'd say not overly sedated, let's, let's put it that way. But uh, if he's taking any drugs, he's not taking enough to uh, have, it, have any untoward effect. And Edward Eichel, a psychotherapist who studies body language, says it's a tough call. He looks very fearful and very guarded, but very present because of that. You know, he's right on the edge. On the edge of an addiction? Or was it something else that made Jackson run and hide? This testimony on tape may be Jackson's alibi. Watch what happens next. You okay, Mr. Jackson? You want to take a break? My mouth hurts. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, with the break, did you find it necessary to take a, a pain medication? Do I find it necessary? Did you, at the break, did, did, um, did you have to take a pain medication for your yes. pain? We will have much more of Jackson's words for you later on in this broadcast, including what he says about his feelings for children. Well, we now know that Les Aspen was pushed out as defense secretary, and the man who the president was secretly begging to take the job has done so. Niles Latham was at the White House introduction. Moving quickly to put a stormy year at the Pentagon behind him, President Ladies Clinton gentlemen, turned to one of the, the country's of the most United respected States, military Secretary minds Defense, to replace Defense Security Secretary Les Aspen. He is former Navy Admiral and Deputy CIA Director Ladies Bobby Ray Inman. I'm grateful that he's agreed to make the personal sacrifices necessary to return to full-time government service and to accept this important assignment at this pivotal time in world events. 
Inman has served with distinction in sensitive military and I'm intelligence posts under four presidents and is popular with Congress if and the military. As he accepted the nomination, force. he put on an astonishing display of political independence, support, saying he originally did not want the job to and had to be persuaded to accept it. I would tell you up front, honestly, I did not vote for President Clinton. I voted for President Bush even though I was mad at him about his handling of the economy, but because I considered him a personal friend. The president did know that when he asked me to take this job. In fact, sources say the wooing of Inman took several days, a process starting well before Aspen agreed to resign. Following the disasters in Haiti and Somalia, the president had lost confidence in Aspen. And two weeks ago, he asked Chief of Staff Mac McClarty to begin a quiet search for a replacement. The deal to get Aspen to step down was not cut until hours before the announcement was made. By that time, Inman had changed his mind and agreed to join the Clinton team. Inman's mission is to use his golden resume and his popularity with the armed forces in Congress to bring stability to the Pentagon during this time of budget cuts and bottom-up reviews. The White House is also hoping the tough-talking Texan will emerge as a strong new voice for an embattled foreign policy team. Niles Latham, Fox News at the White House. The diaries of Senator Bob Packwood now are in the hands of a federal judge. There are accusations that the senator altered the diaries after they were subpoenaed by the Senate Ethics Committee, which is looking into allegations of sexual misconduct. Today, Judge Thomas Jackson ordered the senator to hand over the diaries until he can decide whether the Senate has a right to see them. Well, New York State has a new state attorney general. The legislature picked one of their own to fill the post, Assemblyman Oliver Coppell. He's a Democrat from the Bronx. He takes over for Bob Abrams. He quit to take a job with a law firm. But Mr. Coppell's job is only secure until next November. That's when voters get to pick a new attorney general. Mayor-elect Giuliani is serious about trimming the government. The New York Times reports he's considering several options, including merging the Taxi and Limousine Commission with the police department. Another plan would let the state take over the Consumer Affairs Department and the Human Rights Commission. Mr. Giuliani says these are only suggestions and workers should not worry about losing their jobs. There shouldn't be any fears at this point because all, all that is happening right now is people are looking at things and people are looking at various ways uh, to improve things. No one suggests that getting rid of Consumer Affairs is going to help the city's fiscal problem. In fact, Consumer Affairs generates revenue for New York. It solves tough consumer problems, gets money back into consumers' pockets. Mr. Giuliani made another appointment today. He chose Fran Ryder, the head of the Liberal Party, as the third of four deputy mayors he'll have. She'll concentrate on planning and community relations. And only four deputies is a big cut. Mayor Dinkins has six. Well, fans of Barney, that purple dinosaur, are turning red with anger. He's coming to New York, but it looks like only people with deep pockets will be able to see him. Linda Schmidt found people are crying rip-off. One, two, three, Barney! These children may have been smiling when tickets went on sale December 1st for the Barney Show at Radio City Music Hall, but some aren't smiling now. Parents are outraged that tickets for the Purple Dinosaurs' 11 shows in March sold out in just two hours. It was a nightmare. I mean, I've t I tried five different ways, and it was basically impossible, and everyone I know said, so I don't know one person who actually got tickets. Disappointed. Jacqueline Cruz of East New York called to charge tickets just 20 minutes after the ticket office opened. She said to me that the tickets were sold out before they went on sale. The City Consumer Affairs Department says 15 ticket brokers in the New York metro area bought a bulk of the tickets, advertised them in newspapers, and illegally overcharged consumers. A ticket that would go for $30 were being sold for as much as $200 by one company or $150 by several companies. Uh, this is an unscrupulous price and it's ripping off consumers. It's hard to find many of the brokers. Some operate out of their apartment buildings. Other unlicensed brokers, like Tickets on Request, list this building at 535 8th Avenue as its business address. But there isn't any office here. John Petroselli of Greenwich Village says after buying tickets from brokers, he has to meet them in the subway or in New Jersey to pick up the tickets. Sometimes it's a kid who looks like a messenger showing up with tickets. Sometimes it's an elderly guy w with a suit. It's common knowledge that scalpers and ticket brokers buy the number of tickets in bulk. But in this case, however, Radio City Music Hall had limited the number of tickets to six per person. But apparently the ticket brokers were able to maneuver around the restrictions. Ticket brokers apparently are able to 
pay people to stand on line for them. Uh, and those people, called diggers in the trade, will buy up to the limit of tickets and give them back to the ticket broker, who now has a stockpile. The violators will be fined $500 for each ticket they sold. But that's little comfort to Susan First and her three-year-old daughter, Amanda. They still don't have tickets. Linda Schmidt, Fox News. Of course, Barney is not only popular here in New York, he also has a grown-up fan in Senator Ted Kennedy. The Massachusetts senator dressed up as Barney for his annual Christmas bash and told some dirty jokes. He called himself Tyrannosaurus Sex. The audience thought it was funny, but word is one little kid did scream when Kennedy ripped off the mask to reveal his own face. <laughs> <laughs> Until I had on the 10 o'clock news, find out what happened when a pet snake turned on its owner. Is Brenda changing her zip code? Hear the surprising news about Shannon Doherty. Plus, Californians go nuts over Howard Stern's private parts. We'll have all the hoopla. And the rapper Tupac Shakur rips into the media after one of his many courtroom appearances. If not, you ain't You just like the rest of these bitches trying to bring me down. So that's why I curse you mother out of me. When police respond to a call from a suburban home, you won't believe what they find inside on the next Rescue 911. Tomorrow at 6.30 on Fox 5. Giving beats everything and nobody beats the winds. Christmas is a magical time. Santa's on his way, and the gifts you can't wait to get will soon be under the tree. Like AT&T gifts from Nobody Beats the Wiz. This AT&T remote answering system 1323 is just $79. And this AT&T cordless telephone 5450 is just $99. For Christmas, as always, Nobody Beats the Wiz. The best leathers cost a lot less right now at Burlington Coat Factory. These beautiful full-length ladies' leather coats are only $99.90. Great-looking men's and ladies' leather bomber jackets are an incredibly low $69.90. Plus, there are thousands of other leather coats and jackets. The finest quality at the low prices that make us famous. Burlington Coat Factory, where the best leathers cost less now. I got it at the factory. Burlington Coat Factory. They do right. There were names, names that stood for evil, for madness, for terror. But there were also names that brought hope, that meant courage. Names like Oscar Schindler. Their lives meant nothing until their names meant everything to him. A film by Steven Spielberg, Schindler's List, rated R. Now playing in select areas. This portion of the news brought to you by Suzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drive. Isn't it strange that people spend five days a week trapped inside an office? Only to spend their weekends trapped inside a fence? Presenting the 1994 24 valve 175 horsepower rodeo. It can take you where you won't feel boxed in. It's Suzu. Practically amazing. The rap star Tupac Shakur seems to play police stations more than arenas these days. And while he was making his latest courtroom appearance, his accuser was saying she feels more like she's somebody's new target. Amy Atkins reports. At his arraignment, Tupac Shakur had two words to say about charges that he sexually abused a 20-year-old woman. Not guilty. Afterward, he had a few more choice words, launching into a series of expletives about journalists. Find out what really happened and report the story. If not, you ain't shit. You're just like the rest of these bitches trying to bring me down. So that's why I curse you mother out of your chest I can. Then he told Fox News producer Michelle Williams just why he's so mad. And the way the world is today, a woman can say anything about a man, and I'm guilty until proven. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't even have a chance. Everybody already made me guilty. My career's already going this way. Did she lie? Of course she lied. Truth is that she was sodomized in a hotel suite by Tupac and his associates. According to the criminal complaint, on November 18th at the Parker Meridian Hotel, the rap star and three friends took turns forcing the woman to engage in oral sex. Prosecutors told Judge George Roberts that the woman accusing Shakur has been receiving drop the case or else threats. It's a fact. She's been receiving threats, physical threats against her life, threats um, to coerce her to drop the charges. She's under police protection. Judge Roberts didn't buy it. Otherwise, he would have increased the bail 
or impose some other type of sanction. Tupac Shakur will be back in court here in New York next week to set a trial date in this case. On January 12th, he's expected to be in an Atlanta courtroom for allegedly slapping a fan. On January 25th, there's a hearing in Texas involving a state trooper who was shot by a man listening to Tupac Shakur's lyrics. And Tupac Shakur himself has been accused of shooting two police officers in Atlanta. He's keeping every police department in the country busy. He's a one-man crime wave. Amy Atkins, Fox News. Crime is still number one on the hit list for New Yorkers. More than two-thirds of the people who answered a New York Newsday Gallup survey say crime is the most serious problem facing this city. But at the very same time, the number of victims has gone down. 42% say they have been crime victims in the past year. Now that's down by 6% from 1989. Meantime, two men are charged in the murder of a supermarket worker who was shot during a holdup in Queens. Police say Lewis and Edgar Perez and two other men came in through the back door of the Pioneer supermarket in Ridgewood. The robbers scooped up cash, then shot Chulho Park in the head, killing him. Customers are shocked by the crime. It's, it's really, really amazing that in your own backyard, you know that you're not safe anymore. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Tonight, police still are looking for two more suspects. Well, Mayor Dinkins is spending some of his last days in office crusading against toy guns. He says it's a mistake for parents to give them to kids and also against the law for a store to sell ones that look too real. And the Sega video game Night Trap came in for a lot of criticism. A lot of lawmakers and parents call it too violent. Now Toys R Us says they won't carry it anymore. A Long Island man is in the hospital with a cobra bite. Where would he meet a snake like that? Mario Bosquez says right in his own apartment. The place authorities raided tonight. By the looks of his collection, 32-year-old Andrew Siambra of Center Reach has a singular fascination with deadly reptiles. Now a single bite from one of his lethal cobras has landed him in the hospital fighting for his life. We found two yellow cobras, which are venomous. We found one, uh, two timber rattler. They're illegal to have anywhere in the United States. We have state conservation responding right now. We have one horn viper and a cross species rattler. That's a partial list of what Suffolk authorities found in his small studio apartment. He was apparently bitten sometime last night, rushed to Jacoby Hospital for anti-venom treatment. He'll also be feeling the sting of the law to be charged with cruelty to animals and possession of endangered species. The veterinary expert at the scene described many of the animals' condition as being in poor to deteriorating condition. The animals were cruelly kept. Um, there was defecation in the cages. They were uh, kept on cardboard, which should be, the animals should be kept on pine shavings. And the cardboard attracts bacterium. It's very terrible for the animals. They also found a koala-like creature also in poor condition, said to be endangered and illegal to possess. Officials slapped a second search warrant on the house for items they could only describe as contraband. Siambra reportedly was no stranger to trouble, having served a jail term before for two exotic pet store robberies. The stolen animals were later found in his home that police once again say has become a pit of cobras. In Center Reach, Long Island, Mario Bosquez, Fox News. And still ahead on the 10 o'clock news, why you might want to head to a bar after you hear the latest research from heart doctors. Also a deadly plane crash caught on home video. Details when we come back. Isabella was dying of cancer, and then she met Dr. Avisi. Now the state won't let him practice, and her parents say she's been condemned to death. Watch the next A Current Affair. A Current Affair, tomorrow at 7 on Fox 5. Her daughter and grandchildren are gone, victims of a drunk driver. I don't want anybody else to ever have to go through what we're going through. A tragedy is now her personal crusade. Watch Inside Edition. Tomorrow at 7.30, immediately following A Current Affair. Somewhere between sundown and sunrise comes Stetson Sierra. Investigators are working hard to try to find what caused a deadly plane crash in Southern California. You can see the destruction in this home video after the private jet slammed into the ground in Santa Ana. The crash sent burning debris flying everywhere. All five people on board were killed, but the pilot died a hero. He fought to steer clear of a business area nearby. A lot of people on the ground could have been killed. In medical news tonight, there's new evidence about the benefits of toasting to good health. 
A study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that having one, two, three drinks a day helps keep the heart healthy. The researchers say alcohol clearly raises the body supply of so-called good cholesterol. But doctors are shying away about recommending a drink a day over concerns about alcohol abuse causing liver problems, high blood pressure, and strokes. A pregnant woman from Chicago beat attempts to force her to have a C-section to save her baby. The woman says God will protect it. She is a Pentecostal Christian. Doctors say her fetus, which is close to full term, is being deprived of oxygen and will die or suffer severe brain damage if it is not removed from the womb. But the highest court in Illinois says tonight that decision rests with the mother. Wall Street turned around some. The Dow Industrial Average closed up over nine points. It lost almost 50 points in the last two days. Winning stocks beat the losers on the big board by a margin of about seven to six. The price of a share was up a dime. Over on the Amex, the price of a share was up four cents. The index there was up a point and a half. The NASDAQ composite was up almost three points. Well, Mr. Diller went to Washington and United is going to the workers. Here's our Fox Business News report. United Airlines has reportedly reached a deal with their union to let them buy the airline. The deal calls for the unions to buy 53% of the carrier and return for $5.5 billion in concessions and work rule changes. Right now, United officials are meeting to finalize the terms of the agreement. A decision on the buyout is expected by Monday. Seven years we've been working towards this, and uh, right now we're closer than we've ever been. We're excited about it, and I think the average line pilot is excited about it. The reason they want to enter into this agreement is so that they can get their cost structure in place so the company will be better able to compete in the global marketplace. Barry Diller, the chairman of QVC, was on Capitol Hill talking to Congress about the wave of media mergers that are being proposed. Mr. Diller was trying to assure lawmakers that these partnerships would not stifle competition in the industry. Time Warner is moving forward with their plan to launch an interactive television network. Engineers in Orlando showed off the new digital system and said they plan to have it up and running in Florida early next year. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. Finally, it's going to be a green oh, Christmas for the folks at Disney. There. That's because Aladdin, their animated blockbuster, is setting video sales records. To date, they've sold more than 21 million copies of it. And that's the Fox Business News for Thursday, December 16th. Let me share this whole new world with you. And still ahead on the 10 o'clock news, Princess Di says goodbye. Howard Stern sure knows how to draw a crowd. We'll tell you about the Howard mania in California. The surprise news about Shannon Darty. We'll give you the latest on her TV career. And more of that bizarre videotape of Michael Jackson. And I go, but I love you endlessly. Love and we will share. So come and go. Brilliant. Heart stopping. Powerful. Julia Roberts is dynamite. Denzel Washington is riveting. The Pelican Brief, rated PG-13, starts Friday, December 17th at a theater near you. Fox 5's gonna make you a hotshot TV executive. Do you get the secretary? The big-time office? Not to mention the six-figure salary? No, but you will get to decide what goes on the air New Year's Day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's viewers' television takeover. You choose the shows and the stars you want to see. Pick from our classic series, Perry Mason, I Love Lucy, and Southern Gomer Pyle. And hey, isn't that private secretary? <laughs> or be Trey Hip and get seven to five with All in the Family, Three's Company, Three's a Crowd, Small Wonder, and the Ropers. <laughs> Plus you got Night Court, Mash, Mr. Belvedere, Different Strokes, Mom and Family, Too Close for Comfort, and that Fox Kid from Family Ties. Send a postcard or just call 1-900-820-2882 now. Calls are 79 cents a minute. And you get to choose the shows you want to see New Year's Day. It's your choice. But if you don't call, we can't be held responsible. This is Maria Basile.
You know, I never thought I could do this. And this is Maria's new BMW 525i. And then I saw my brother could handle it, so I started thinking. The incredible BMW 525i. I love this car. Goes for just $38,875. I handled it. Good going, Maria. She did it with You Can Handle Lisa. If my brother could handle it, I figured I could handle it. And if I can handle it, you can handle it. At your Tri-State BMW dealer. AT&T just announced to the world that they will, quote, move gracefully away from the iPlan. Well, this is an invitation from MCI to all AT&T iPlan customers. Move gracefully yourself right now to MCI and the savings that MCI delivers. Call now and we'll start you off with $20 worth of free long distance. More now on that riveting Michael Jackson day. This is video testimony in a copyright lawsuit he gave the day before he went into hiding. That is when Jackson announced he was hooked on drugs and he ran for cover to get help. Could you uh, sing that for us? Well, he goes, I love you more than he take you anywhere. And I go, but I love you endlessly loving what you share. So come and go with me who won the town? By how many songs that you've written uh, have been released? Oh boy, I've never counted. Probably over 30, 40. How'd you get the idea for that, what you've just described? It just came. It just came. Quincy said to me, you know, write a song that you and Paul McCartney can sing together. So, I guess I went to sleep, and when I woke up the next day, there it was, and I ran to the tape recorder, and I started to put down what I heard in my head. When I woke up that morning, I said, this is so lovely, and I went to the tape recorder, and I put it down, and it was, Da 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 have you uh, ever won any awards? Lots of awards. Could you uh, give me some of them? Well, there's Grammy Awards, there's American Music Awards, there's NAACP Awards, um, Black Caucus Awards. There's all kinds of awards in my field. <coughs> Excuse me, I know that kills the... <laughs> the microphone man. He said, but it would be very important for the children. As soon as he said that, he know how I feel about children and how important that is to me. So come and go with me to on the town. But we both cannot have her. So it's one or the other. And one day we'll discover that she's my girl forever. Don't build your hopes to be let down Cause I really feel it's time That she tell you I'm the one for her Where did you and Mr. Ritchie work on the song that would ultimately come known as We Are The World? My house. Any place else? Well, when teaching everybody all the different parts how to sing the song, all the different celebrities. And in studios, I think. Uh, Mr. Jackson, just up there, how you feeling? Not good. We take a break. Throughout that riveting testimony, Jackson played working tapes of his songs in the early stages to prove that he wrote them.
Well, the bad boy of Radio Howard Stern is mouthing off on both coasts. Then the bad girl of 90210, what her future holds. Robin has a scoop when we come back. Up on me today. This holiday, give the gift of entertainment. A gift certificate for two to the Westchester Broadway Theater in Elmsford. It's good for a year, includes dinner, and they can choose from many concerts or Broadway musicals. City of Angels, Evita, our 20th anniversary spectacular Sayonara, the best little whorehouse in Texas. For gift certificates, visit our booths at shopping malls in White Plains, Yorktown Heights, Nanua, and Danbury, Connecticut. Or call 914-592-2222. After 19 years and over 3.5 million customers, it's still your best entertainment value. Introducing your Toyota dealer's holiday lease packages, the 1994 Toyota Camry, and the 1994 Toyota Corolla. This holiday season, open one up. Macy's Winter White Sale. Spectacular savings and values on everything for your bed and bath. Save on cotton bed in a bag ensembles, twin or full, $99.99. Save 30 to 50% on our exclusive White Goose Down comforters, any size, $249.99. Save 50% on oversized 30 by 54 inch bath towels, just $5.99. Spectacular savings and values on everything for your bed and bath. Macy's Winter White Sale. Be there. Brother P-Touch, get it. If you know someone who's been good, get him a Brother P-Touch. I got one for Mrs. Claus. Ho, ho, ho. You can't breathe. You're sneezing. Your sinuses and nasal passages are blocked. Where do you go for help? Last time, you went to your doctor for a prescription. This time, he told you to get the same prescription strength medicine without a prescription. Tavis D, the antihistamine decongestant that was once the most prescribed by doctors, is now the most recommended by doctors for 12 hours of relief. Good morning. Tavis D, one tablet, 12 hours, no prescription. This portion of the news brought to you by Express Mail Overnight Service from your post office. We deliver for you. Express Mail from your post office. We deliver for you. Police in Queens are trying to clean up a neighborhood by clearing out the hookers. Officers raided 10 alleged houses of prostitution along Roosevelt Avenue and Jackson Heights tonight. They say neighbors have been complaining about the business the hookers brought in. 28 women were arrested in the sweep. They'll be in court tomorrow morning and probably back at work tomorrow night. And as if L.A. doesn't have enough trouble, all that smog and traffic, now they got Howard. Radio's Big Mouth went to Pasadena to hold his book signing. Barbara Schroeder went along. So what if it was cold and the lines were long and it was the middle of the night? These obstacles are nothing to Howard Stern fans. This one couldn't get a babysitter, but seeing Howard was so important, she brought her well-bundled baby and waited for 12 hours. He says everything that I think. Don't stand in front of him! Roman's bookstore in Pasadena was thrilled to have Stern in town. He was supposed to sign books in West Hollywood at the Book Soup store. But when city officials tried to tap him for the $25,000 security bill, Stern got mad. I didn't it look like selective enforcement of some wacky rule they came up with. One woman was shaking when she talked to him, said one security officer, Howard loves it when he has that effect on women. I, I love you. I'm sorry you had to wait so long. It's worth it. You're making the girls faint. Yeah, I'm not making you faint, though. <laughs> How come? Well, Are a you little more mature. I'm just, no, I'm just holding it in, is all. Oh, uh, that's all. Yeah, you can barely contain yourself. Outside, it was face after face with a smile and a signature in hand. The signature itself is, you know, yeah. what's worth it all. You know, meeting Howard Stern. Pretty, pretty all right guy. Pretty all right. This couple told us they had just gotten married this morning, and the first thing on their honeymoon was to get Howard Stern's signature. We thought this would be a real special way to get married. And then there was this young woman. I told him, can you sign my stomach? <laughs> he goes, sure. <laughs> That's it. And are, do you think you'll wash it off before the baby's born? I'll leave it there as long as it stays there. <laughs> you know, I've been mentioned as a possible late night host. 
But I think that uh, the idea of that would be very intriguing because I think it would be very easy to beat Leno and Letterman. But uh, right now, I'm not doing anything for Fox. In Pasadena, Barbara Schroeder, Fox News. A sad day for the British paparazzi, one of their favorite people bidding farewell to life in the public eye. Princess Di has had it with the media, and today photographers snapped frantically as Princess Di attended her final official engagement before retreating into a more private life. The princess says she wants to spend more time with her son, something she was unable to do in recent years. All right, a lot more ahead for you. Robin has the latest word on Shannon Doherty. That's right, and Carl has sports, a record-setting night for the Knicks' big man. Now, here's Nick. Coran, we're getting closer to the weekend, and things may not be looking quite as bad as I was thinking last night. I'll be back to tell you about that, and what is our chance for a white Christmas in New York City? 23%, 33%, 43%. Stay tuned. The answer is coming right up on the 10 o'clock news. From the director of Children of a Lesser God comes an unforgettable experience. You want to get yourself a husband, Cooney? I had a husband. That's how I got this way. Wrestling Ernest Hemingway is a wonderful film, brimming with life. Joyce, I think you better put on some clothes or I'm going to call the cops. Richard Harris's best performance. Robert Duvall is wonderful. It will light up your life and warm your heart. Wrestling Ernest Hemingway. Rated PG-13. Exclusive. Oh, Hello. Mom, where am I? Telling you in amazing ways. Your AT&T phone center gives you more ways to say I'm coming home. And during our holiday sale, we give you more ways to save. Hey, Dad, just a couple more things to pick up. We'll be home soon. Dad, I just finished packing. You'd light on for me? No problem, sweetheart. AT&T Phone Center's holiday savings make it easy to say I'm coming home. Get to Burlington Coat Factory now for these terrific men's and ladies leather bomber jackets on sale for only $69.90 each and only at Burlington Coat Factory. Today, Topsy flattens the competition. Mr. Competitor, what do you want to now? Oh, uh, just a little undercover work. Ooh, sounds dangerous. Nah, nobody delivers on Sundays. What's better than making free delivery seven days a week? Running into that loser! Uh -oh. Tops delivers a Sony stereo with five-disc CD changer for 488, or this Pioneer 40-inch big screen for 1298. Forget about it. You gotta be happy at Tops. I was blown away when my dentist told me I had tartar. Doctor, I said, I use regular baking soda toothpaste. My teeth feel clean. Jakey said, it's not enough. Use new tartar control crest with baking soda, and your teeth will be cleaner. Now you can get the clean feeling of baking soda and proven tartar control from Crest in a toothpaste that prevents tartar better than regular baking soda toothpaste. So I brush with tartar control Crest with baking soda, and my next visit's great. I finally cleaned up my act. A smart choice from the dentist's choice. Now the sunshine came back a little bit this afternoon, and I think we're going to see a little more sunshine in the forecast, but of course the weekend is coming, and our history of weekends hasn't been so good around the New York City area. Let's see how we'll make history set this weekend. Right now we're going to check the high and low for the day, 46 and 34, a little bit above average for this time of the year, as we take a little view of the Woolman skating ring tonight. 63, the record high in 1971, and it was 7 degrees on this day way back in 1876. Just a little trace of rain this morning as that big coastal storm moved out to sea. But it's cold now with a clear sky, 34 degrees, humidity 56%. Still a gusty northerly wind. That's going to die down as the night comes along. And the barometer 3016, it's rising, and that's a good sign for better weather. Clear skies now, and it's well, basically mid-30s from Islip to LaGuardia tonight. 29, though, at White Plains and Danbury, and then we chill to even colder readings by Haynesville. 26 degrees there to the mid-30s down by Trenton. Satellite picture, you can watch that system finally getting out of here, taking the clouds away with it. Nice clear weather moving in behind it from New York State right on down into West Virginia. And notice this system sort of pinwheeling in the Rockies. Great news for skiers out there. They're getting tons of snow in Colorado into Wyoming. Not so good news for us, though, because that storm tomorrow heads into the high plain states with some snow and rain. While we enjoy, though, great weather tomorrow with sunshine and still temperatures just slightly above average for this time of the year. By Saturday, this system will move into our region late in the day. The good news I'm thinking for Saturday now is it's not going to have time enough to pick moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll see a little rain late in the day and then maybe just a little rain or snow shower activity on Sunday before it clears out. So not the greatest weekend, but better than what we've seen. Let's check the forecast for New York City in the tri-state area. Clear and cold tonight. 30 in town, but near 20 in the colder spots north and west. Tomorrow, lots of sun, 
A seasonally cool day, still above average, though normal high should be about 40, we'll be at 46 degrees. Here's the five-day forecast, and you'll see some rain showers moving in here late Saturday, especially Saturday night, high around 46, and then Sunday morning, some rain or snow, that threat of snow really inland, and not a lot of it. Nice day on Monday, but chilly 40, and then another chance of some rain late on Tuesday. Okay, what is the chance for a white Christmas in New York City? Now, it's only nine days away, so you have three choices, 23%, 33%, or 43%. Just three choices, huh? Yes, and you're going to... You want to try B, one of them? You B, say B. B. The answer is A. Oh, really? That's 23 it? 23%. Oh, oh so, uh, bah humbug. But that, 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 of course, <laughs> being a weatherman, that will change drastically. Of course. Yeah. It, 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 it could have been A, B. It could have been C. It could be 50. It could be... We're giving okay, the benefit of the doubt. We've got nine days to try. Okay. <laughs> right. um, Robin's here now uh, with word that there might be a slight increase in the uh, rate of unemployment out in Hollywood, right? Robin? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, John. It's 90210. Oh, no, this time for Shannon Dougherty. You know, last year there was talk that 90210 creator Aaron Spelling wanted to fire her because he didn't like the influence that bad girl Shannon was having on his daughter, Tori, who's also on the show. Well, now it seems Shannon's scandals may have finally caught up with her. I just want you to know that was not my idea. Maybe not, but Shannon Dougherty, a.k.a. 90210's Brenda Walsh, is apparently going to be looking for a new zip code. The Hollywood Reporter and Daily Variety I both report Shannon will be dropped from the show after this season. So far tonight, Spelling Entertainment, which produces the show, isn't commenting. Neither is Shannon's publicist, but industry watchers say they're not surprised. All the reports about Shannon are that she has been fired from the show. Um, nobody has said why she's been fired but there's a lot of speculation going on. And why shouldn't there be? In the past four years, Shannon has become TV's most controversial actress, the bad girl of Beverly Hills, known for throwing tinsel town-sized temper tantrums. But recently, she told us her reputation has been blown out of proportion. I don't know, maybe in some ways I antagonized her a little bit by, by being a very outspoken young person. But the scandals just kept coming from Shannon's alleged barroom brawl with this aspiring actress in an L.A. hotspot to her alleged threat against her former fiancés. Then this summer, Shannon even shocked her own cast members when she ran off with 18-year-old Ashley Hamilton, the son of George Hamilton, and married him after knowing him for only three weeks. The backlash got so bad, two 90210 watchers started a national movement with the I Hate Brenda Club. Shannon was not amused. No, I often go home at night crying because I just don't understand why I'm getting such a bad rap. And what do 90210 fans think now that Shannon's seemingly been dumped? I feel for her. I was hoping she was going to get back together with Luke Perry, but I guess it won't happen. I don't want to watch you no more. Why? Because they fired Brenda, and Brenda was my favorite. So there. And a big star turnout tonight at the Ziegfeld Theater in Manhattan for the premiere of director Jonathan Debbie's new movie, Philadelphia, starring Tom Hanks as a gay lawyer with AIDS who gets fired from his job, and Denzel Washington as the homophobic lawyer who defends him in this Hollywood's first big-budget movie to tackle AIDS. I don't think it's, uh, it was a risk. Uh, uh, I, I think that the American public is extremely hip. It's uh, one of the best films I've ever been in. And uh, I know it's a film people will not only enjoy, but they'll be moved by and, uh, you know, take away something really important from it. And Michael Douglas was also among the notables that tonight's premiere, Philadelphia, opens later this month. Coran, back to you. Thanks very much, Robin. Well, it was sounding a lot like Christmas tonight at St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> Choirs from St. Anthony's High School on Long Island, St. John's University, and the Cathedral Choir raised their voices in song. It was all part of the 15th annual celebration called A City Singing at Christmas. And coming up next, Carl has the sports for you. Patrick Ewing was going for the record books. He also has what they're saying tonight about Bobby Hurley's recovery. The 10 o'clock news will be right back. Don't spend a lot of time thinking about what gift to get your relatives this year. Frank Sinatra, duets. 13 new recordings of Frank Sinatra singing his timeless classics with the world's greatest musical talent. Frank Sinatra, duets.
There is absolutely no better holiday gift. Shopping at Service Merchandise couldn't be easier, Henry. You just grab a clipboard, you pick out what you want, you write it down, and up it comes. I, I didn't know it this. A better way to shop, a better way to save. Get on the Weslow Cadence treadmill with Auto Incline. Vary your speed up to eight miles an hour. Track your workouts with the electronic monitor. The Weslow Cadence treadmill, on sale for just $359.96 at Service Merchandise. Call for the store nearest you. U.S. Healthcare. Sometimes the best medicine of all is a good laugh. <laughs> I can't hear. Look, here, try it yourself now. See that? Uh, can you hear anything? What? Can you hear me? Huh? You can't hear anything, can you? How can, can I hear if you're gonna put these in my ears like that? Uh, I mean, after all, I can't hear if you got them on my ears. Huh? Oh, hold me closer. 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 If I hold you any closer, I'll be in back of you. <laughs> this gift is from Jackie. Oh, golly, oh, shucks. I hope that you like it. It costs 40 bucks. All other husbands have their wives behind them. Napoleon had Josephine behind them. George Washington had Martha behind them. Mark Anthony had Cleopatra behind them. What have I got behind me? Don't you dare! U.S. Healthcare, a health plan for living. <laughs> It took a lot more than tough cowboys to win the West. Lady Stetson, the spirit of the West, the power of a woman. Lady Stetson, it's how the West was won. We've been going out for six months, and I didn't know what to get him, so I asked my sister. A book. Too impersonal. Long underwear. Very funny. Prenuptial agreement? Let's go. Where? Marshalls. Yeah. Cool shirt. I can afford this. Jim would love this. I thought we were shopping for my boyfriend. We are. Men's nylon warm-up suits, just $49.99. At department stores, $90. Hubba, hubba. It's better than long underwear. I never pay full price. Marshall. As we told you last night, there is some good news coming out of that tragic loss of life on the Long Island Railroad last week. One of the victims of the shooting, Amy Federici, donated her organs. Tonight, the man who got one of Amy's kidneys wanted to say thank you for the gift of life. I admired her decisions, you know, to, you know, her and her parents and the organ, you know, donating their organs and, and kind of looking beyond the terrible thing, you know, and, and allowing something good to come from it. Three other people also received organs donated by Amy. All right, Carl's here with sports. Uh, quite a night, at the, a record-breaking night at the Garden. Tonight, yes, I understand, but huh? remember the movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I do. That's what it was tonight at the Garden. At the Garden, it was indeed, it. John. Well, uh, prove it to me. Knicks and Lakers. You know I'm going to prove it to you. The Knicks and Lakers. Uh, let's start off with the good, though. Make that the greats. One of the all-time greats, number 33, Patrick Ewing, with that basket, surpassed Walt Frazier to become the Knicks' all-time score. Ewing got the standing ovation from the fans. Congratulations from his teammates. And Walt Clyde Frazier was there himself. Frazier scored 14,617 career points. Patrick had 27 tonight, so he now has 14,626 career points. That is the good. The bad had to be the Los Angeles Lakers. Yuck, this team, 8 and 13 on the year, is a franchise that simply ain't what it used to be. Knicks killed them on the boards. Charles Oakley right there, 21 points for Charles, 36 21 Knicks in the first. Nick started making Riley's old team look silly at, th at this point. Oakley to Ewing to Campbell, 57-42 New York at the half. Lakers were really bad. Here's the ugly. Doc Rivers will drive. He twists his left knee. Early report that is severely sprained. He'll get an MRI tomorrow. They're worried about possible ligament damage. And if that's the case, the Knicks are in big trouble. Knicks 108-85 over the Lakers. Laker coach Randy Fun was quoted after the game as saying, the Lakers don't belong on the same court as the Knicks. Bingo, Randy. <laughs> Question at the Meadowlands tonight after losing to the Hornets last weekend. Did the Nets belong on the same court with Charlotte again tonight? Well, take a look. Larry Johnson says, I may be in the Meadowlands, folks, but this is my house for now as Charlotte gets the easy layup. 
from Muggsy Bogues to Larry inside. Johnson 15 points, Charlotte 54-51 at the half. As for the original question, the Nets did belong. Derek Coleman, watch him inside. This is my house, baby, get out of the way. 71-62 in the third, then the Nets iced it in the fourth. Kenny Anderson coming up right here to Chris Morris. Morris had 19 points on the night. Watch the dish from Kenny, this is what he does so well. Nets did belong, 111-95 over Charlotte. Lenny Wilkins and the, Hawk, and the Hawks belong in the record books in Atlanta. They were trying to extend that winning streak tonight to 15 games, but the Pacers spoiled the party. Dale Davis got the slam. The streak ends at 14. Pacers 99-80 over Atlanta. Well, what does Shaquille O'Neal do when he's not being suspended by the NBA for committing flagrant fouls? Well, he takes the day off and spends his time promoting. Shaq was at Universal Studios in Hollywood today, taking a ride on the old land shark. <laughs> O'Neal will take a ride on the sidelines tomorrow when the Magic visit Phoenix. He was suspended, of course, after being called for a second-degree flagrant on Sean Kemp the other night. Doctors say Bobby Hurley is making a speedy recovery, recovery and may be removed from intensive care tomorrow. Uh, Hurley was not wearing a seatbelt and is lucky to be alive. His parents said at a press conference today their son's competitive nature should help him on his road to recovery. He's been an extraordinary competitive person his whole life. People home in Jersey talk about how his, he, he comes back from a basketball game, he's not happy. He goes out and runs five miles. And Mike Krzyzewski was talking to Bobby about this the other day, about how he could never get him tired of practice. So I'm sure that certainly helped, but he really got a great head start by all the right people being there in the beginning of this, or he, would, you know, he wouldn't be with us right now. All right, a couple of sports notes before we, before we say goodnight tonight. The Yankees made Ricky Henderson an offer today, but apparently it was an offer that Ricky could refuse, so he did. Giants say Jumbo Elliott officially is out for Monday's game against the Saints. And the quote of the week comes from tight end Johnny Mitchell of the New York Giants. Johnny said, quote, it's sad to say we seem like a better road team than at home. Fans get down when we don't do what they expect us to do. They're fair weather fans, and that's sad, hmm. unquote. The Jets will play at home on Saturday against the Cowboys, and if Johnny drops a pass, the Boo Birds will come out in force. That's Fair cool. weather fans. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't make fun of your own fans. That's, that's cool. dumb. dumb. All right, finally, you may, you may want to turn up the volume on your set to get the full effect of the story. So go ahead, Hoy. Okay, this is a contest in Japan. Maybe turning up the idea wasn't such a good idea after all, huh? It was a shouting contest, and the guy you heard last won. He was shouting, I just split my trousers. <laughs> Time for us to split. That's our report Ooh, for tonight. Great. I'm John Rowland. And I'm Koran Mahalik. We'll see you back here tomorrow night at 10. Thanks for being with us. Good night. Good night. <laughs> This one likes to burn his victims alive. But don't try to stop him. Federal agent. You won't shoot me. Unless you want to get burned. Go, go! Time to call 911. X-Files, tomorrow at 9 on Fox 5. We are charged with bringing in the renegade Apache Geronimo. The greatest manhunt in history has begun. Siskel and Ebert give Geronimo two thumbs up. It thunders across the screen like a herd of wild horses. This holiday, the name for big screen entertainment is 
Geronimo on the big screen in theaters everywhere. Rated PG-13. Giving beats everything and nobody beats the wins. This Christmas, a great gift for someone special would be a car stereo from Nobody Beats the Wins. This Sanyo Digital AM FM Stereo Cassette is just $99. This JVC with detachable face security is $199. And a Kenwood Cassette Receiver with detachable face plate is only $229. For Christmas, as always, nobody beats the win. From GMC Truck. Hanna-Barbera, creators of the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Yogi Bear, and over 50 more of your favorite cartoons, along with Toon Cell Town Gallery, are proud to present Limited Edition Animation Cell Art. Each hand-painted cell is numbered and hand-signed by the pioneers of television animation, William Hanna and Joseph.